One. Welcome to yet another uh, train wreck of uh, man buns and Jesus. We're just this being is, that up front with it now. <laughs> yeah, this is an episode. We don't know which one. Uh, <laughs> I'm Ben. I'm Pastor Ben, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church here in Lake Orion, Michigan. That is Pastor Josh Laborious, Edgewater Lutheran Church in East Vale, California. Uh, you nailed it. You nailed it. First try. First time. Let's go. Stuck the landing. It's episode Josh, 22, by the way. It only took me 22 episodes to figure out where you live and what your church is called. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, it is, it's a fairly, like, Edgewater, East Vale, it's really easy to confuse those two. Yeah. Because neither but of you them are not... sound like church names. Yes. And you are not near water, so I should have assumed that that was not the location you're in. Because I feel like if, though that's not necessarily true, but I feel like if somebody's going to call a place Edgewater, that's not like... Well, that that's like a community or something. Chances are that it's on the edge of water. The, does that not seem to follow? It does. Well, that's that's where our name came from, or at least this is the legend that I've heard. Right. It's the the housing development we're eventually supposed to be a part of. At one point, I, I don't know if it still does, but at one point it had like plans for a man-made lake in the housing okay. development so we were going to be edgewater which like that'd be pretty cool if they end up with a man-made lake and that's that's bordering the church's property that'd be pretty dope anyway um that's not our topic for today our topic for today is uh we're, we're doing another one on vocation which we would previously done we talked about the vocation of like careers i think was was the previous one um and kind of like vocation as a as a calling as as a position or a responsibility god's called you into so today we're talking about the vocation of hobbies and just the reality of, of like christian hobbies we're gonna theoretically I, I i don't actually know where this conversation is going to go if you've been listening to this show for any length of time you know we don't have an outline we don't have a plan we just run with it um, but some of the things that we're, we're thinking of touching on are, uh, you know, what, like, are some hobbies better than others from, from like a faith standpoint? Um, like what's, what's an appropriate amount of time and energy and money to put toward a hobby, like all that, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I don't know. I think the thing I want to start off with is uh, I think there are some hobbies that are better than others. I agree. Like from, a, from a faithful standpoint, like I'm just so if you ask me, you know, Josh, what are your hobbies? Um, three come to mind immediately. Uh, and that is woodworking. Um, the second one is is video games. And the third one is weightlifting, which like part of that is exercise, but also part of it's a hobby, right? Like I don't necessarily, when I get up for the gym, it's not necessarily, oh, I need to go exercise. It's I need to go lift heavy things so I don't kill anybody today. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit of gym humor for you that's rooted in reality. Um, but like those hobbies, some of those hobbies are better than others, right? Like the weightlifting one that has a nice side effect of I'm, I'm healthier and I'm, I'm more, I, I'm more able to help people, right? Like if someone's moving out, they can call their pastor and I'm like, yes, I can carry that fridge by myself. Let's, let's get it in the moving truck. Um, and yes, I am at this point talking about a full size fridge. So it's been done at the seminary a couple times. I'm probably going to pay for that when I'm older, but anyway, woodworking, uh, I would say, you know, that's a, that's a productive hobby, right? I'm, I'm, I'm creating things that for the most part are, are useful to someone like most of the furniture in our house I built. Um, 
so like it's a useful hobby it's i'm i'm supporting our family with it um and then we come come to the hobby of video games which has no discernible benefits right <laughs> I've heard some people argue that it like helps with hand-eye coordination, but I'm not sure I buy that. Um, I'm not. I'm not making the world a better place. I'm not making myself a better person when I play video games. So, of those three hobbies, I would argue that woodworking and weightlifting are better hobbies than video games. Like from a faith perspective, right? Because we're called to love God, love others. We're called to like be good stewards. So like when I'm talking about taking care of my body, that, that can be a stewardship issue when, and, and dealing with how do I support others when, when I'm doing the woodworking, I'm, that can be service to others, right? At least potentially, I'm not saying it always is, but at least potentially with video games, there's, there's very, very limited potential. <laughs> For me to serve my neighbor through video games. What do you think, Ben? Uh, well, I'm going to list off my hobbies here because, uh, I don't know. I feel like I should be upfront with that, too. Um, I think my first big one in, in general is just sports. Um, I love watching them. I love playing in them. Um, I've tried probably... I don't know, like 10 to 15 different sports in either pickup or organized fashion throughout my life. Um, and, you know, some of those are better than others in terms of just being able to afford to play them. Um, but I, I feel like that for me is kind of a combination of my, like, my version of lifting where it's just like, I need to currently my favorite sport is disc golf so it's i need to throw things far so that i don't kill someone today <laughs> uh, there's something really satisfying to seeing uh, a disc you know fly someone someone's gonna listen to this who doesn't work out or doesn't work out for that <laughs> motivation and they're gonna think both of these two guys are sociopaths they might be right um I'm not yeah i'm not touching that one <laughs> uh two for me is probably woodworking um mine is usually a little bit more function over form uh where i i know josh to be a more ornate woodworker uh i like to just build things that accomplish tasks <laughs> um what and, an engineer yeah ab absolutely uh aesthetics be darn um <laughs> uh yeah, so there's that. And then three might also be video games. Uh, and I, I would like to defend the video game. How did, how did I not know that you played video games? Because all of my video games are sports video games. Oh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, not good at those I, ones, so I don't like to play those ones. I affectionately call my Xbox my FIFA machine. Uh, <laughs> FIFA is the soccer video game. Uh, title for those who and are also not, the you know, the world the world federation for for for, <laughs> for international soccer. soccer competition yeah um anyway uh and to defend video gaming and like there is one useful example of, of video gaming so far as i've heard uh and that is <laughs> amongst the elderly it is great mental stimulation Neither you or no, nor I can consider ourselves elderly at this point. But once we're retired, we're allowed to play as many video games as we want for the sake of mental stimulation. It helps fight Alzheimer's, Josh. <laughs> I feel like I saw an article at some point saying it caused Alzheimer's. So, you know. <laughs> I feel like that's I don't know, the same. Man. But, you can do the same thing with coffee, though. Like, there's articles about coffee causing cancer. There's articles about coffee and the oxidant, antioxidants in it preventing cancer. So, like, it's all just 
yeah, it's a mess. Anyway, to be honest, we we should be more concerned about my coffee causing type two diabetes because of how much sugar I put in it. But you know, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to touch that one today. Yeah, let's not going to touch that one today. Let's not. Um, no, I think I think when it comes to hobbies, you, you do have to think about why why you're doing it and what what impact it has on you right because because i'm I'm gonna take video games as an example because while while i love weight like i while i love weightlifting and woodworking i probably spend the most time and money on video games right um and there and there are a couple reasons for that the mostly there are limiting factors for the other two right like if you're not a weightlifter you can only weightlift so much like your muscles need time to recover you're going to create like some serious issues right so i lift like 45 minutes a day and while i could do like i could lift for three hours in a day but then I wouldn't be able to lift for the next two days. So I like I kind of spread it out. Um, and and with woodworking, there's a reality of like there are only so many projects I can do, right? Like there <laughs> we only need X amount of furniture. We like there are only so many other things that I can even think of to do. So like there's a limiting factor there. But with video games, every time I log in, there's something to do. And it's not like if I, you know, Friday's my day off. Uh, we record these on Thursdays. So tomorrow's my day off. Um, and typically on my day off, I, because Chris is at work, I will sit and I'll play between two and three hours of video games, right? I start the day, I clean the house, I, I take care of whatever errands maybe need to get taken care of on the day. And then I sit and then I sit down and I play a fair bit of video games. And the reality is there is nothing stopping me from then on Saturday sitting down and playing more video games, right? There's no recovery period I need unless mm -hmm. I rage quit because I was losing so much. Then I need enough time to forget how badly I was losing. Um, so speaking of video games, you have to take into account, first of all, like what, what are you putting into it, right? As far as like we're, if we're considering what's a faithful hobby. Or what's what's like, uh, yeah. What what what's a hobby that God would approve of? I guess it, to to put it kind of maybe to overstate it a little bit, but I think that there's maybe even three ways that we can go with this too, because like not all hobbies are built the same. So I think at least in my head, and you can let me know if you think of other categories beyond this, but I'm thinking of three immediate categories of like hobbies that can be productive um, or hobbies that can be faithful is probably better verbiage because one of the categories is productive. Um, pr so a productive hobby would be something like woodworking or um, uh, sewing, crafting, um, something Graphic that you design, are doing. Editing, yeah. Um, one of our classmates... <laughs> Yeah, one of our classmates at the seminary got really into coding because Brendan is like that. I don't know why. Um, Brendan, if you're listening to this, we love you. Uh, <laughs> I do. I do. Brendan's a great guy. Um, maybe we'll have him on the podcast and talk about it sometime. Um, <laughs> but, oh, we uh, could have him on and talk about church websites. Yes, that would, be, <laughs> that, that would be a rough Even one. Um, so there, there's productive hobbies. Uh, the second category for me is community hobbies. Uh, there are hobbies that people have that allow them to just be in fellowship, to be in community. Um, I think sports fulfill those a lot of times, um, though those could also be a productive hobby because they help keep you healthy. Yeah. Um, but like, I have a lot of people here at the church that bowl um, and you know bowling is not the world's most strenuous activity uh, 
it is kind of active. (laughs) All right, Josh. We're not going for speed records. Um, (laughs) No, 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 you don't understand. I suck at bowling, so yes, I'm going for a speed record. (laughs) Anyway, but like that's a a good community hub because you you get time to talk to people. You get time to, to, to hang out. And it's one of those where like, because you're also doing something else, you don't feel pressured to have conversation. Um, And so like you have more natural conversation and more natural like flow to things um, sometimes. Um, And then for me, the last category is Sabbath. Um, I really like our, one of our professors from the seminaries take on Sabbath and that it's not just necessarily like sitting around and doing nothing. Um, Sabbath is an opportunity for you to get rest. Um, some of that should certainly be, you know, in the form of prayer or praise or worship, um, or receiving absolution, receiving Mm -hmm. communion. Um, the things that as pastors, we really want you to do, but some of that also needs to be like my body needs rest. I need spiritual rest, but I also need physical rest and I might need mental rest. And well, and I want to add on to that. I, I think mental and emotional rest can't be understated either. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And something, something that comes to mind for me is what I have seen to be the most, I guess, like practically useful and research-based definition of introvert versus extrovert. So I'm I'm mm-hmm. about to drop some some definition on you, I guess. Some knowledge bombs. <laughs> um so the the real distinction between introvert and extrovert from from research that has been convincing to me. I'm gonna put it that way, because I know different people have different definitions and but this is how I operate. You are introverted if you derive your emotional, your mental, and your social energy from being alone. You are an extrovert if you derive your social, spiritual, mental energy from being with people, right? Because you can you can have great social skills and be an, ex, er, an introvert, right? Like you can connect with people, you can be the life of the party, but at the end of the day, you're exhausted from the social interaction. Whereas an extrovert, they go to the party, they're with the people all day. And at the end of the day, they're like hyped and ready to go. You know, going to a party, going to be with people is energizing for them. For an introvert, it's exhausting. Whereas, you know, sitting at home during these COVID lockdowns for introverts, it has been, and I would suspect introverts got a lot done during the lockdowns because they were, they were, they were recharged and extroverts were dying. Um, so when we say take a Sabbath, part of that is you, you have to figure out what it takes for you to recharge these different kinds of energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think you're right. Part of that has to be devotional, right? Mm-hmm. You can't, you're, you can't recharge your spiritual energy on your own. Like it's not, that's not how this works. Um, but part of it is, I think a big part of what these hobbies do, but I want to add, I want to add one category for you. So you have the Go three, and, but the three, I would say those are faithful hobbies. And I want to add a fourth category that is just unfaithful hobbies. Okay. And, and I think, I mean, there are subcategories of that, but I think it's, it's perfectly fine for us to just call it a fourth separate category. Cause you could call it the opposite of these unproductive hobbies. You could say, you know, self isolating hobbies. You could say exhausting hobbies. You could say draining, like all of these, you could throw a bunch of negative adjectives out there, but the reality is they're just, unfaithful hobbies. So uh, a really extreme example, maybe you're a cocaine addict and your hobby is cocaine. Or I shouldn't say that. Maybe maybe you're not an addict. And and this is a purely hypothetical situation because cocaine is an addictive drug. But you do cocaine. And that is your hobby. That's not productive. That's not Mm -hmm. healthy. You're probably not building community. Right. This this is what I would say is an unfaithful hobby. Doing cocaine is an unfaithful hobby. So mm-hmm. don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, 
but I and I think when we're measuring these things, you have to take into account, I mean, first the cost and the time, mm -hmm. right? So like video games, at this point, there is not much cost to me. Because at this point, I play exactly two video games. I play Destiny 2, and I play Rocket League. I purchased Rocket League once. I never have to pay for it again. I, I do have to pay every once in a while for Destiny because they release a new DLC and I, I need the new DLC. So like every, you know, like every two years, I have to shell out another 60 or 80 bucks for the new content. Okay. But as far as like, a, as far as costs and hobbies go, that's fairly low cost, monetarily speaking, right? I was thought I'm doing a project with woodworking right now. Um, and I'm, I'm making, I'm doing all these cuts on a scroll saw that costs $400, right? That is, it is a more expensive hobby than video games um, until I have to replace my Xbox, but we're not going to talk about that. But I think what, what more you have to consider when we're trying to see, is it a faithful or an unfaithful hobby? And then you can get into what the category is, is what is its impact on your other vocations? And I think that is where these categories are really helpful in saying, in kind of thinking about where, where, what is this impact? Because if it's productive, you can talk about, well, what of, what of my other vocations is this productive for? So like uh, using the woodworking example, that has an impact on my vocation as husband, as, as a provider for the family, right? Because I'm, I'm supplying furniture right at a cost much lower than if i were to go out and buy a comparable quality of furniture at uh, ethan allen or something right mm -hmm. um and then w when it comes to community right and this i think is a really good measure of like the video game one am i spending so much time on video games that i am neglecting the communities i am called to be a part of mm -hmm. right if I'm deciding, you know, Ben has a call, so I'm going to vamp for a little bit. But if I'm deciding, like if I, this. okay, Ben's going to take that. Um, so now we're going to talk about him while he's gone. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to talk about him while he's gone. But when I think about video games, right, it's, if, if say I get invited, my, my, I, I have a community group with young adults. Say they invite me, they say, hey, you want to go out and get pizza or something? And I and I consciously decided, I was like, no, I'm going to sit at home and play Destiny instead. My, my hobby, the cost of my hobby is now coming at the cost of my vocation as a member of that community, right? And that is a problem. But then you also have to think, you know, maybe it's the end of a very long day. Maybe I worked 16 hours that day and I need a release and video games are, are a way that I do that. Right. So at that point, it's it's maybe having a positive impact on that community, because I'm saying if, if I go and I engage with this this community, I'm probably going to say something or do something I regret because of the day I've had. So I need to recharge. I need this time to kind of decompress, right? So it can go both ways. You can have that discussion both ways of, of what is that impact on community? And then finally, what is the impact on Sabbath? What is the impact on, on the rest and the recovery that you're having? Because that goes out and that plays into all your different vocations, right? Um, if you are, if you are recharged and you are and you are at peace and you're recovered, you're going to be able to serve all your other vocations well. Your your job, your family, your friends, your community, your like you name the vocation you're a part of, you will be able to serve it well if you are rested and recovered. This is why this is why taking a Sabbath is so important. This is why vacation is important. Um, because you need that time to rest and recharge so that you can engage well with the other things you're doing. Um, 
so when we're talking about, you know, is a is a vocation faithful? Before we before we start to categorize, you got to think, what's the cost? What what am I putting into this? Whether that's uh, money, whether that's time, whatever. And then how's it impacting your other vocations, right? Because I would I would say, and I'm hoping Ben gets on back on the line pretty soon. Um, because I, I want to hear what he has to say about that. This is a weird conversation I'm having with you, you guys right now. Um, but what what I what I would say about the vocation of having hobbies is it is it is a subordinate. Um, it's a subordinate vocation to a, probably all the other ones you have. And Ben, I'm I'm glad you're back because so I've been I've been vamping and just to highlight what I've just talked about, um, is we we really have to first of all when when your hobby pursues your Sabbath, that's going to impact all your other vocations because you have to be well rested to serve your family, to serve your profession, to serve your community, whatever. Well, um. And then, you know, kind of wrapping up my whole rant there was that you have to take into account the cost and the impact of your hobbies to determine whether or not they're faithful. And my and what I think I'm pushing to, and I want to hear what you have to say, is I think the vocation of hobby, whatever, fill in the blank with your hobby, is subordinate to your other vocations. And it is in service of your other vocations. Right, because like I'm thinking if you have a vocation and your hobby is model, whatever, or it's woodworking or it's video games or it's exercise, like whatever your hobby is. And your and your wife needs something or your friend needs something. Your your hobby should not take precedence over your call as a friend or over your call as a family member or over your call to your your profession i think i agree with you and i want to maybe even reframe it slightly as like um your hobbies should be used to make you better able to accomplish your other vocations so like if i'm gonna use my personal hobbies here so in sports right i'm doing that to exercise my body i'm doing that to on some level exercise my mind um and it's making me stronger and more fit to accomplish more in the rest of the week um and sometimes, like, I feel like that might be something I need to do over a, like, more minor thing that comes up in my vocation of friendship. Josh, did that come through or, or am I frozen? Yeah, uh, your face is a little frozen, but your audio is coming through just fine. Um, yeah, I think I think you're right. And if we say that out of context, right, it's kind of like just an idea. Maybe it doesn't it sounds it doesn't it, it doesn't track, but I'm going to give you an example and immediately you're going to be like, Okay, never mind. This makes a lot of sense. I had a friend in in college. Um, he was a pretty good friend, um, and he struggled with depression. Um, and he was telling me there was there was a building on campus we used to go to, and we would go sit on the roof, and we would and we would have. It was a good place to have like deep conversation, right? Um, and he he had told me about a recent like experience that he had had 
where he was really struggling with his depression one night and he called what was his best friend. Yes. And she said, I'm, I'm binging a Netflix series right now. Can like, we're, we'll, we'll talk some other time. It might be the one in the directory. I can hear Ben can loud and clear one? on his phone. So that's what he's doing right now, just so you know. <laughs> there he is. He, so like, and, and we hear that. So if, if you can imagine like so, one of your best friends calling you and saying, I'm really struggling with, with my depression right now. Um, can, can, we, can we meet up? Like, can we connect? And they say, no, I'm watching, I'm like watching a Netflix series. If you hear that and you don't say like that, is, if, if that doesn't flag immediately in your mind is that is not the response you have. We need to talk because there's something we need to figure out, but like it, it tracks logically for us. Like, I don't care how engrossed you are in your, in whatever series you're watching, your vocation as friends should be coming first. And I think as soon as you put like a real situation around this, it becomes really clear to us. Um, another example, I, I went to a, a, a Bible study that uh, one of our church small groups and they're, they're doing like this series on like manhood or something. And I don't even remember what the topic was, but the, the video example, like there was some adult he was sitting on his couch, he was playing video games, and his wife came in, like, clearly dressed to go somewhere nice, and the storyline was, like, she was receiving an award, and he was like, no, like, do you know how close I am to unlocking this achievement or whatever, and and the response is like, dude, you're dope, that's not the, and, and I think it's right, right, your, your hobbies are fine until they start coming at the expense of your other vocations. Right? I'm going to slightly disagree. So, and I, I think it's only in rare circumstances. So my, my pushback would be something kind of along the lines of you can't help others if like you need help yourself kind of thing. I, I know that's kind of a butchering of a, a phrase, but um, I think of it this way, like, as pastors, we will occasionally have really long, stressful weeks, uh, just like anyone just else. Just occasionally, just yeah. every once in a blue moon. Yeah. Um, and and one of the things definitely not twice a month. And just just like you know, a lot of other jobs, we we do have long, stressful weeks. But one of the things that kind of weighs on pastors more than it may on other disciplines is that we deal with a lot of um emotional stress on a week in week out basis um especially when we're doing counseling or um when we're working through it with someone through a crisis or when there's all sorts of emergencies going on um like we are helping other people bear their emotional stress and sometimes that can be a significant buildup to where you are in need of sabbath you are in need of community you're in need of just something else for a little bit um because you can't take more emotional stress at that moment um and so my my one pushback on your, your hobbies should not get in the way of your other vocations is if you are like <laughs> Dude, could uh, you hear go scrowl through that's impressive I, could, I didn't know my mic yeah. was that good yeah um and it came through like a guy going whoa <laughs> um, yep yep that's my dog <laughs> um yeah, if you are stepping away from one of your vocations because it would break you and you are using your hobby to help you release, you know, pent up stress or anxiety or whatever, um, 
in a healthy way, um, I think that can sometimes take precedence. Um, again, rare circumstances, but I think it sometimes can take precedence. Yeah. Well, and I, I think even that, um, like I would say that is ultimately in service to your other vocation, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you're doing it so you can, um, you're, do, you're doing it so that long-term you can faithfully do your vocation, right? Because if you burn out, you're not helping anybody. Um, and, and it brings back to mind that joke we had at the beginning of the show and, and I'm going to describe a meme for you. And so it's, it's a pie graph and the pie graph is labeled reasons I lift weights. And there's like a T there's like a, an eighth of the pie is, is in orange. And then the rest of the pie is in blue. And the, the legend is labeled, the orange slice is labeled to get stronger. And the blue slice is labeled so that I don't murder anyone today. Right. And, and there's a very real reality that a real reality that was redundant. Um, <laughs> that if you are, if you have a ton of stress, you need an outlet for that. Like for me, weightlifting is a, is a phenomenal outlet. Um, not, not for stress as much as frustration or anger. Like if, um, if someone in, in the congregation or someone I meet or around, like they just, they, they anger me or they frustrate me. Um, part of, part of what helps me to continue to treat them with love and grace, um, is the fact that I do burn that anger off. It's just, instead of swinging at you, I'm lifting I'm lifting heavy weights, um, right? And and that's and when I was in high school, I did it with tennis, right? If I if I was have if someone was driving me nuts, I went out to the tennis court and I just served for like an hour. I would just serve ball after ball after ball, and I wouldn't I would be lying if I told you I never visu visualized like someone's face on the tennis ball as I was you know hitting it as hard and as fast as I could. Um, but but like there's there's that reality right um you need the outlet and but I, I i would say i don't think that's disagreeing with the the reality that your vocations come before your hobbies on some level i think it's just you have to keep the longer game in mind mm -hmm. is I, I think i mean you kind of talked about it earlier as like Okay, your your hobbies being a part of of at least some of your vocations, if not being their its own vocation, um, and I think you know just to throw another overused phrase around. Um, uh, yes, we love um, cliches. Yeah, it 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 really comes down to what is going to do the most good, right? Um, what? I've never heard that that like as a what? phrase that's thrown around. Do the most good. Um, maybe you're in the wrong circles for this, but like, or like, do the least harm is also thrown around as kind of a counterpoint to that. Um, okay, never mind. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I've never really heard either of those phrases. So. I guess in terms of the way that I frame hobbies and like the, the priority level is is that like what's going to do the most good uh long term short term whatever like what is going to do the most good um and if that thing is you know i need an hour to go huck discs in a field and uh get some stress out then that might be what I need to do. But if that thing is, you know, serve my wife, do the dishes, whatever that may be, like that should come first before something that I'm going to enjoy or that comes for me. Um, 
and you know, every I want everyone to hear this. Nobody give me crap about this on on freaking Sunday morning. On Fridays on my day off, I clean the house and take care of the errands before I play video games. Okay, so I don't want anybody coming up like, "Why are you doing it?" No, I take care of what I need to take care of before I waste my time, sir and or madam. Sorry to cut you off there, Ben. No, that was about the end of my point. That was about the end of my point anyway. Oh, good. Um, So before, because I'm sensing we're about ready to move to wrap-ups. Just, I think maybe we we list off some... uh, some acceptable hobbies like some some good hobbies right like if you're looking maybe you're looking for a hobby maybe you need a hobby um some that come to mind uh i think all the ones that we listed that we do uh obviously we think we're they're pretty cool if you play destiny 2 uh step one get good and then step two send me a friend invite and we'll play together Step one must come before step two. That's an important step. I don't play with scrubs. <laughs> um, I, if you don't mind me starting off that list, I think some that maybe fall on the opposite side of the spectrum from where we've been today, because we're all like, oh, testosterone, aggression, uh, for a lot of ours. <laughs> um, one that I think is incredibly beautiful here at the church is we have a, a fantastic quilting group. Um, I'm, I talked about it in our small group uh, podcast a couple of weeks ago or last week or whenever we did that. Um, It'll be two weeks ago. Last week we talked yeah. about critical theory. So, Oh, that's right. Yeah. How can I forget? Oh, uh, <laughs> but uh, like those ladies, significantly love to quilt or sew or um it's also the same group that makes our banners like if you're watching the the video version of this you can see the banner they made for my installation over over my shoulder um and that brings them a lot of joy and it brings them a lot of of community um i think it probably brings them some sabbath um i know that there was a group of them that went up in the north part of the state this week to go quilt um like it's it's something that that brings them relief and rest and sabbath um so if you enjoy that kind of thing go for it um and you know know your limits but enjoy yeah um some other hobbies that come to mind i know there there are guys at the congregation at at edgewater who uh cigars are their hobby and it's yeah i mean go for it um i think it's definitely in that sabbath category i don't i don't know how productive it is necessarily or uh but or well i guess it's a community for them too right they get together and they talk and they and they smoke and um so that's that's another hobby that i I would say is more like more relaxed more chill i guess Mm -hmm. Um, gardening, I think that's an incredibly productive one, um, for health reasons, for oftentimes people will grow food in their gardens reasons, um, for enjoying the beauty of creation reasons, like there, there's something productive and Sabbath resting and like, I don't know, there's just a lot to that. And, um, yeah, I think gardening is an incredibly productive hobby. Yeah, kind of on a on a related but not too related. Um, I think like food, food can be a hobby, whether mm-hmm. it's like baking, which is a hobby that I love and I would engage in more if baking didn't come with so many calories. Um, <laughs> I think like trying new foods, so making food, eating food, I think both of these can be hobbies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And especially for that, uh, making food obviously is like a productive hobby, but eating food is a major community hobby, right? Like that's the best way to connect with people. Go get some food. 
preferably unhealthy food because nothing bonds people quite like eating the same junk together you quote like all of my favorite chefs fat is flavor <laughs> um another one that uh i was thinking of that we haven't really talked about yet music um make music listen to music enjoy music um you know go to a concert in the park go to a concert in a, an arena um if you have instruments at home bust them out if you don't sing in the shower that's fine i won't well i might judge you if i can hear you but i won't i will try not to judge you um <laughs> now i'm just like, thinking of how terrified i would be if i was singing in my shower and i walked out and you were standing there looking at me judgmentally because my uh, first reaction is ben when did you get here and then <laughs> ben how did you get in my house I have my and then, ways. <laughs> and then Ben, why are you listening to me sing in the shower? These are all questions I would have. Um yeah. Anyway. We um, we digressed really hard there. <laughs> reading. Reading's a good hobby. If you need books, like fun books to read, you let me know. Like you you reach out. I, I got some for you. I love I love reading. It's it's great. I love I love books. Um, what else? What else? Home repair. If you're I weird, guess? what? Home repair, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if that's Ooh. a hobby or like. A... I mean, this kind of goes along with gardening, but like, I had a guy in the congregation the other day tell me that one of his favorite times of the week is mowing the lawn, because like, it's an it's a, a period of time where his body is occupied and his mind is not. So he gets to just stop and think and like enjoy that, you know? Um, so if you have a hobby like that, that's cool too. Um, yeah, I haven't mowed a lawn in a long time. And I, I like that man. I enjoy it. So. Unfortunately, living in SoCal, you might come <laughs> your, your, your house. If you ever get one, might come with a plastic lawn, just so you know. Yep, yep. You may yep. not get to enjoy that that hobby very much until you're no longer in SoCal. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Maybe I'll go visit my parents and mow their lawn. There you go. Because <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, during the summer in Georgia, you got to mow your lawn like twice a week. Grass grows so fast. Um, and, and obviously, like we could go on for another couple hours just listing hobbies, but those are some good ones. Uh, no, we didn't say like collecting stamps or, which is called philatelene, by the way. I learned that from Family Guy. I mean, go for it if that's your thing. That just sounds dreadfully boring to me. <laughs> but, you know, to each his own. So uh -huh. takeaway, uh, I think my my major takeaway is with with whatever your hobby, if you're if you're thinking you're, and maybe you've never had this this thought, but if you're thinking to yourself, you know, is this a waste of time? First of all, it quite possibly not, right? It's it's a good thing to have hobbies. It's a good thing to have things that you do more or less just for fun. But if you're really concerned with, is this, is this just a waste of time? Is this something I should really be doing? Think about some of these things we've talked about today and just kind of think, is this supporting my other vocations or, or is it not? Um, so that's, that's kind of my takeaway is it's hopefully a little bit of a metric for measuring your hobbies. I think, uh, yeah. I, I very much agree with that. And I think um, my only other thought would be um, consider the investments that you're putting into your, your hobbies, your time, your money, um, and maybe gauge that against how much time you're investing into your faith. Uh, and not to say that like, you can't put more time in like one of your hobbies. Like 
say one of your hobbies also happens to be your career if you're a woodworker or something uh i'm not gonna judge you for that um if that ends up being more than your devotional time but like think proportionally yeah yeah that's yeah that's all i got prayer thoughts josh I, I, well, I just wanted to let that one sit there for a little bit. Um, let it, let it, let it marinate. Let it marinate. <laughs> you got a problem, problem with Canada gooses. You got a problem with me, and I suggest you let that one marinate. <laughs> oh, it's a quote from a great show that we probably shouldn't recommend <laughs> on this podcast. Um, uh... So, prayer thoughts. Uh, I think the the biggest prayer that I would say to put on your on your heart this week is maybe just pray that God would work through your hobby. Because I think a lot of the coolest connections we make in life, they start through our hobbies, right? You meet someone who who lifts or who woodworks or who crafts and, and you make a, and there's a really cool relationship that started that way. Um, and that can turn into some really powerful gospel conversations. So um that's what I would say. Pray, pray that God works through your hobbies um, and shows you and shows you what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think mine is probably kind of on the similar on a similar vein, but just pray for dis discernment in your hobbies and like uh, clear direction on boundaries for what is healthy, what's productive, what's community oriented, what's actually Sabbath rest and what's just doing it because you're trying to avoid other things. Yep. All right, uh, I think that's what we got. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>